one little ember in there. How do I always get ash in my food? We are literally a minute into the day here in Air Creek and already we're stuck. So we might as well dig into it and start the day. Welcome to Lost Sheep Adventures, guys. My name's Jono. Yeah, creek track's not far from old Queenstown. About an hour and a half-ish to get down to the start of the trail. Tucks its way back up into the mountains, the Air Mountains, that are pretty much across the lake from Queenstown. So at the far end of them is Cecil Peak and Walter Peak. Mavora tackles uh, along the side of them. Some gorgeous river colours down there actually. So I've been cruising along a little bit and uh, following the trail alongside and all of a sudden it comes to an end. I was warned to say that it was going to collapse into the river multiple times so it looks like we might have to duck back into the river and make our way up through the creek which is bumpier, hopefully a bit more fun. So my plan is to tr kind of try and stick to the trails that actually go run along the edge of the river oh, and avoid the big rocks um, rather than funneling my way through the river constantly it just ends up like a rough ride really uh, so a bit of a hill climb coming up here that we'll pop our nose back up onto the, uh, the edge of this hill and continue on from there The Air Mountains are advertised as a grade 4, however in my personal opinion here it did feel a little bit more like a grade 2 to 3, only a few small mud holes and the old river crossing to tackle in this beautiful spot. Another little hill climb here, this one's a bit more vertical, basically it seems like the river's come through, washed a few things out, and um, of course the trail just meanders its way up through and everything. Not bad. Looks like we're coming along a bit of a longer bog hole this time. Might actually jump out and check the depth of this one. literally like you know, 10 centimeters deep. Comes in handy as well to learn your vehicle and learn the width, the length, where your tires are, what they're doing so that when you do have to straddle something you kind of can with ease. Otherwise you might slip in and get in a bit of a strike. The trail will sort of make its way in and out of the river, sliding along the side, ducking back in. Really made for a diverse trail to be hitting for the weekend. Highly recommend you rock on out here, try your luck. Nothing too serious, but just a cool shakedown trip. Two kilometers from the hut now, crawling through the creek bed. And the road takes a bit of a little dip here. I don't think it's going to be too major, but It'll be interesting to see how this goes. The hole in front of the truck was around waist deep on me, so I was a little worried I wouldn't be able to do this. But the new rig seemed to walk it, picking the right line every time we would get you through. This 
this one's a bit interesting. Seems like we've got a bit of a um, a water crossing into a step onto the bank. Uh, let's see how we go with this. Because this looks a bit mucky and muddy. So after some scouting around, doesn't look like there's actually any other worn trail. So we're going to take this trail. Let's hope we make it. Ah, it's actually a pretty solid bottom for these all. We've cleared the first part now into the ruts. Oh, that was a hit. Getting into it now. Keeping the momentum up, those wheels spinning, what a good drive. It just didn't seem to stop, it just kept going and going and going, so I didn't either, just keep that foot on, keep those wheels spinning, get you through to the other side. Mud can be some of the most fun you have off-road. Definitely comes in handy to have a buddy though, or a guaranteed way out if you do get stuck. This wasn't too bad, we were able to annihilate it. Once you hit the creek here, we had a bit more traction beneath on. us, we was go. able to crawl on up. It explains all the water, there's literally half a river coming down. Finally that river crossing at the end though, and we're back on the main track. Smooth sailing from the water. So there's a bit of a steep little crossing here, and right in the center of it is a big standing wave. I spoke about these in the Maze Town video where it's rolling over a big rock and creating that white water. So if I put my wheel through that white water, there's not going to be anything there. Upstream of it though, it's going to be a big boulder. Seems like a tad easy to lose the trail out along here with the water damage and flood damage and sort of this re, you know, the river resetting everything all the time. Now we're just following along what looks like vehicle trails through the tussock grasses here and ultimately getting to the hut. Not far away now, literally half a K. Roam on in, set up camp, cook dinner. Not bad. more flood damage here this is a bit of an air uh, this is a bit sharp I reckon for the old surf but we'll give it a go yeah uh, there's a bit of a bank on the other side I have to drive down well down this one up that one let's see how this goes I feel like I'm gonna get stuck here actually yeah lifting wheels let's try a bit more frontal on. There's a big boulder sort of right in the front there that I'm just having trouble actually getting around. Oh, it's that awkward moment when I'm stuck. Yeah, okay, sometimes. <laughs> So I was able to get it out pretty quick and easily. Literally kind of did nothing. Uh, so now it's trying to line the front wheels up with that little bit of a road I built to hopefully lift that front end up before it collides. <laughs> 30 seconds of road building and I'm out. Sometimes that's all it needs. The trail definitely gets a bit more interesting the further and further up the valley you get. It sort of winds it all its way up. It's a bit difficult to pick where the actual main line is. I tried to follow it on the maps here, but it ends up all over the place. And it's right now ended up leading into a bit of a bog. Where it looks like there's been a few people out here playing. So we'll pick one and hit one and get on through. No long moment. All right, max tricks. Because the trick with max tracks is getting them under your tread, not just behind your tire, actually ah, under your tread. Have a muddle over it. These are the extremes, so you can actually unscrew all these lugs, replace them, 
much like this side where I got a few damaged ones because I beat on this thing like all hell. Easily the best thing for a self recovery, hence why I've pretty much done everything today. Not been worried because for these things I'm pretty much guaranteed to be out safe and sound within a couple minutes. That was a literally a minute long recovery in a mud hole. These are the best things I've ever had. Oh. Especially the extremes. Well, you're still recording. Hello world. <laughs> We're back. I've been recording for eight minutes. So there you go, an eight minute recovery. That is not bad, eh? Let's not go that way now because I know I'm just going to diff out. We'll go around that one. We can see the hut in the distance now, so a gentle drive up and time to set up camp. What a trail this has been so far. Right, just got to camp. Time to see the swag, it's starting to cool down. Let's get into it, eh? Well guys, it actually wasn't a bad little trail route today. Finally we got to finish the day, we're sitting here outside the hut, we got the swag up, we got dinner basically prepped and ready to go, and we got our little campfire there with a bundle of wood ready so that we can actually cook it, because the plan is tonight, chicken inside the little pot there in the embers, because uh, that makes an amazing meal. So chill out here, have some searchlight, best beer around. These guys are a local brewery in town and uh, they make some about 16 different beers in-house, some amazing beers, APAs, IPAs, Saisons, everything. This one's a Saison and it's probably my favorite. Hit them up guys, you can find them in the description below or on their website and uh, they'll even ship right around the country. So test them, try them out, they're actually damn good beers. So we're gonna call it a night here and kick into some cooking some chicken. It should be damn good I reckon. Stay tuned. I don't really know who in their right mind thinks this is okay. Trying to melt glass and aluminium cans in the fire is not... It just it pains me. It makes a problem with someone else. Some little kid running through, steps in the fireplace, bam! And then we have to come through and clean it all up as well. Just carry your stuff out with you. You have a rubbish bag there for everything else. I don't really know why you think it's okay to burn this stuff. Painful! Awesome guys, so we've got some nice embers going on there. Time for some dinner. As I said, we've got some chicken tonight, garlic and pepper, and some pre-chopped vegetables there. Uh, what have we got? Pumpkin, potatoes, a bit of oil in there, and a few, few herbs in there basically. Chuck it all together in the pot, chuck it in the fire, and then I don't have to worry about it for another hour or so. Uh, While well, I just keep drinking my searchlight, it's going to be awesome. So first of all, we're going to cut into this chicken, hopefully without getting it everywhere. Basically, I'm just going to pile this into the pot. We're somewhere that's going to sit nicely. There we go. Slice it up a little bit more. Also, sharpen your knife first before you come out to places like this. We got there. All right, let's try this. My boot will hold it. Get rid of that grass. Chuck us the chicken in there. When you're out camping, you really want to try and focus on these one one pot meals. They just so much easier. Now the rubbish bag's back by the truck, so that's going there for the moment, but it's very shortly going in the rubbish bin. Then we'll take some vegetables and get our trusty spoon here, jam that leg in there. It might actually just break that leg a little bit. I can't really. There we go. There we go. Get in there. Dollop some vegetables in there, fill the gaps. Nice and easy, eh? 
Like when it takes like Dad's dinner pretty much done, all I gotta do is stick it in the fire now. When it's that easy out camping, that's really just what you want. We might, over, we might as well use all of it. There we go. We'll jam the lid on, she'll be right. Is that a Kiwi attitude, right? We'll try and jam things in where they can fit in holes. There we go. Crush the lid on. And that's dinner done. Let's prep some, some embers here. Sit here, enjoy a beer, wait for dinner to cook. In maybe 40 minutes an hour, we'll check it again and see how we go. I'm excited, this is so easy. Well guys, it's been a few minutes. A few minutes, I've had another, you know, half a squealer kind of thing. So now we're about to actually unveil our masterpiece. That's not too bad. Oh, here we go. Okay. Damn, this smells good. Yes. Here we go. Roast chicken and veggies. Oh, there's one little ember in there. How do I always get ash in my food? This looks like a mean feed. Whoops, it's got ash in there. Take note, do that first. But there's that chicken underneath. Oh, I'm so excited. Pile some veggies on there. There's some veggies. Now let's try and manhandle this chicken a little bit. Oh, look at it. I am so pumped. Damn. Now you can't really complain with a camp feed like that. That's damn good. I'm so excited. So there you go guys, makes sense. Invest in a little camp rock pot like this. Do some one pot meals. Comes in super handy. Ah! <laughs> when your lovely girlfriend pre makes the veggies. <laughs> She's currently pulling the fingers at me. <laughs> Legendary. And then we'll manhandle some chicken onto there. Should grab a leg, eh? Break a leg off. Sorry, Mr. Chicken. Oh, I heard that broke. Oh, it's true, it's a missus. There we go. What a feed and a half. I am super excited. Some salt, some pepper. It's really hot. That is so good. Get yourself one of these guys. It is the best thing I've ever had. We awoke to a stunningly beautiful morning by the river's edge here. What a day it is. Still some frost on the swag there from the cold last night, mud on the truck. What a gorgeous morning. Sun's coming over the hills, warming the place up. River's still gonna be bitterly cold though, so I'm not touching it. Must be time for a coffee instead. Get that fire burning, get the water on, start some breakfast. Of course, bacon. We're all out in the woods here, it's always bacon. New Zealand is a beautiful spot to be traveling this time of the year or any time of the year. Just do be aware it's going to be cold outside of summer, but 100% worth it. Done a little bit of track building. Can't really see what I'm up to here. So we're gonna try and ease our way down this little lip here without lifting too many wheels. And then try and climb back up the other side without bottoming anything out. And look at that, eh? Bit of track building, 30 seconds, and we're through a little creek crossing like that. So the air creek here is in the air mountain ranges, of course. It's a conservation area that's relatively underdeveloped. Quite an awesome spot though, riddled with high open tops, mountain tarns, river valleys, bit of forest and everything. 
and some pretty spectacular views actually out here in front of us we're currently at 958 meters so we're almost at that thousand the air conservation park even incorporates the highest mountain in the southland region at just over 2000 meters uh, that's excluding fjordland though of course pretty sweet stuff pretty cool spot to come in plenty of stuff to see and do including camping four wheeling fishing hunting you know bring the family it's here it's got everything really of course guys don't forget to leave gates how you found them it's a courtesy thing in new zealand and don't forget to like the video as well if you like the content and like what i do hit that like button and do hit that subscribe button more and more content coming as we sort of get bigger and bigger and bigger and it's getting better and better and better awesome guys we'll keep heading on there so driving along i almost get yanked clean from the truck by this stuff this is what's known as bush lawyer it's a parasitic vine that just grows across all the shrubs throughout most of new zealand Definitely found throughout the deep bushes, the west coast, all sorts of bits and pieces really, any rainforest. A really cool little plant, one of my favorites. You can actually eat the roots of them to stay alive out here. How you find the roots, I have no idea. Screw trying to rummage through this vine for hours on end, trying to find the start of it. But the cool thing about it is it's actually got hundreds of tiny little hooks all the way along its vine, all the way along its stem, and underneath every little leaf. So as you're walking along and you get it caught on you without noticing, next thing you know is it's tearing a hole straight through your skin or your favorite shirt, which does really suck. The hooks though, so once they hook into you, you just back on out again, nice and gentle, and no worries. Cool little plant. It's named Bush Lawyer because just like real lawyers, once they get your hooks in you, there's no getting free. Interesting that crossing, it uh, definitely was frozen over a little bit, but it ended up with actually some pretty thick ice. Um, it was negative four degrees when we woke up this morning, so God knows how cold it got last night, but it was definitely frosty. So, slowly crawling our way out, just had a bit of an impasse here. This is where we had to pull back into the trail yesterday because uh, that whole washout has destroyed the road. I don't think my surf's sadly going to get up that climb. I have to come back one day, dig it out, and send, uh, send Shannon's Yeti up there. He's a pied oyster catcher. Don't know what he's doing up here. There's no oysters here. Look at him, I didn't know they could swim. There's another one over here. They must be a little family couple. Uh, fun fact about oyster catchers, they don't actually catch oysters. And I don't think you actually have to catch oysters. I think you just sort of pick them up off the ground. <laughs> Even though New Zealand's only got birds, still cool to see some wildlife. Back at that little climb we did yesterday and she's looking a little steep to drop down. Let's see how this goes. Nice and slow, nice and steady. Oh, that is a bit of an angle. Ah, there we go. Some gorgeous views in these parts team, but this is pretty much the end of the trail. From here though, we're gonna bomb on back to town. So if you really like what I'm doing, do check out that Patreon uh, page down below there. These guys who are supporting me, massive thank you to you. You really do actually keep this content rolling really. So if you really love what I do guys and wanna help out, then $3 a month, which is a cup of coffee really, is gonna get me a lot further in progressing this, uh, this channel. If you really, really wanna help out, then $25 a month, which is a box of beers, is definitely going to um, really help the channel, get the future in there. I'll even come out and find you one day and we can even film your favorite track. So thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Otherwise, guys, this is the end of it. Like, subscribe, comment. Cheers, team. We'll catch you next time. Lost Ship Adventures.